Hello everyone and welcome to another video on using AWS SAM and .NET 6 to build serverless applications. Today we're going to talk about a really important topic and that is testing. Testing of all kinds really helps to improve the resilience of your applications and ensures that as you make changes you're not doing things that are either breaking existing functionality and also meeting the requirements of the features that you're writing. Now, when testing serverless applications, there are, are some really distinct ways of doing it. So you've got unit tests, which are tests you can run locally, quickly to test your business logic. Outside of unit tests, this is where things get a little bit interesting. So there are a lot of emulators out there that you can use to emulate the AWS cloud on your local development machine. And you can use that to deploy your Lambda functions, run DynamoDB tables, and you can use that to actually run requests as if you're running tests against the AWS cloud. Now, my very opinionated view on this is that you should test your applications in the cloud, in the actual environment they're going to run in as quickly as possible. So unless you're somewhere where you've got no internet connection, then my recommendation would always be to get your code into the cloud as quickly as possible. And what that means from, from a testing perspective is that your unit tests you would run locally on your machine to test your business logic, nothing else. Once you've run your unit tests, get your code into AWS and test against the cloud. Don't bring the cloud to your machine, take your code to the cloud. And with serverless technologies, that's actually really effective because you're not, when your code isn't running and your tests aren't running, that code's not costing you anything. If you've got a Lambda function in AWS that's not currently executing, it's costing you nothing. And that makes it a really cost-effective way and a really resilient way to test your applications in the environment that they're actually going to run in, in production. Let's dive into some code. Okay, so here we are leaving off from where we left the last video talking about dependency injection. And we've got our Lambda function configured now with a parameterless constructor that the Lambda service is going to invoke. And then we've got our internal constructor that is used to configure our dependency injection and then retrieve our um, configured iNetwork service from the dependency injection container. Now, how this becomes really useful for testing purposes is that we can then use this internal constructor and initialize that with a mock for our, our unit tests. So let's see what that looks like. The first thing we need to do to get this working is to actually add um, add this assembly hint to allow the internal internal constructor to be available to our test project. And we've also got this, this predefined unit test, um, and I'm actually gonna delete a lot of this. Um, because we actually want to test our business logic now. And obviously when writing a unit test, we want that to use as little of the outside world as possible. So all I want to keep is anything to do with the response and the validation. So we're going to test for a predefined IP. So when we are testing our function, um, one of the things I've added is a reference to the mock library and that allows you to really quickly mock interfaces. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a mock of our network service. So I'm going to create a new mock and that's going to be a new mock of I network service. If I could spell correctly. Um, and we just need to add some references. And then what we can do with mock, if you've never used mock before, is you can actually set up some methods. So I want to set up the get calling IP method and get calling IP and I want to return a sync and I just want to return that same IP address. So what I'm basically saying here is that I'm going to return a static a static IP address whenever that get calling IP method is called. And when it comes to me and actually initializing my function and when I'm passing null in, I can actually pass in an instance of our mocked network service object. So whenever our function calls that get calling IP method, all it's gonna run is this piece of code here, which is gonna return that static IP address. So that solves mocking our network service. Can you see just how powerful that can be? At the point of initialization of our function, we have the option to pass in mocks of our services. So it's incredibly powerful and it makes testing really straightforward. 
So the second thing we want to do from a unit test perspective is actually mocking our um, request, our request that comes in from API Gateway. And that's where SAM gets really powerful. Um, so the SAM CLI actually has um, endpoints. So if I go for SAM local generate events, it actually allows you to generate some sample, um, some sample event data for a whole range of Lambda um, event inputs. So you see we've got things like SQS, we've got Kinesis, we've got DynamoDB, we've got a bunch of different things. And I'm doing using API Gateway. So I want to do a SAM local generate event and I want to generate an event for API Gateway and I'm actually using an AWS proxy. So I want to generate an event for AWS proxy. And what that will then give me is to the console and a sample event for um, an API Gateway invoke. So what um, I've done with that just before, before I started recording is to take this string data and actually put it into this event helper. So I've got this um, event helper class and that has a static um, string of that actual event data that you can see there. And you could have multiple versions of this. So if I wanted to test, for example, an API Gateway post request, I would then maybe add some content to my body. So that might be um, payload and the payload might be a test payload. So we can actually create these um, sample API gateway requests that we know will get passed to our Lambda function. So what I'm going to do for the purposes of my test now is I'm actually going to create a API gateway request and I'm going to create that by DC realizing um, if I go JSON convert DC realize object to an API gateway proxy request and then event helper dot API gateway request. So I'm now going to create my API gateway proxy request that I can pass to my function handler using some simple DC realization. Pass that in there. And then finally, we've got the I lambda, I lambda context. And that I lambda context is what the Lambda service will pass to our function to give some contextual information about that executing function in AWS. Lambda actually has, has some quite um, some good testing utilities. So we can just pass in a test Lambda context object. And that test Lambda context comes from this amazon.lambda.test utilities um, package. So you see there we've got, and we'll just change that to use um, Newton soft as well. And we can get rid of our reference to system.text and JSON and finish and HTTP. So you know we've got we've got a unit test now that's going to test that um, test the happy path. So if I now run this test, so if I go to tests, hello world test, I run my test. That will really quickly give us a response a passed. Excellent. And now if we want to test our unhappy path, so if you remember the business logic we had to our lambda function was that if it was a 10.0 IP address, we wanted to actually return an error extremely trivial piece of business logic, I know. But for the purposes of this demo, um, if I, I can now do test and then for internal IP, should return 400 error. And all I need to change now is just to change this mock. And we want to say that our mock network service is gonna return a 10.IP address. Our expected response is for there not to be a body. So the body will be null. And we're expecting a 400 status code. The headers will stay the same. And then if I can run my document test again, this will now test both use cases. Excellent, two pass tests. So we know that we've really quickly tested our business logic. We've tested this business logic without integrating with any external services, without writing any additional code. All we've created is a mock of our network service using the mock library. And we've used that to test both our happy and sad path. So that covers part one of our video on testing. Now, I was gonna do this all in one video, but in the interest of keeping these videos nice and short and sweet, I thought I would split up unit testing, testing your business logic, and integration testing, how to test your application in the cloud into two separate videos. So that's all for today's video. Next week, we will look at integration testing and how to get into a really good development workflow whilst testing both locally and in the cloud. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you all again, and I will see you next time.